So I'm going to talk a little bit, it's actually a little bit of a continuation of what Raul spoke about this morning, uh, the uh, ARCHES trial uh, for uh, castration-sensitive prostate cancer. And I think that this sub-analysis that was presented at this year's uh, ASCO meeting by Andrew Armstrong is important in terms of one of the critiques that Raul brought up this morning. We're not using these drugs enough. In fact, about only about half of patients are offered next generation antiandrogens at the time they're diagnosed with castrate sensitive disease. So why is that? Well, there are really three reasons. Number one, lack of access. Uh, patients may not be able to pay for it. The staff may not be available. Number two, lack of understanding of the data. Preconceived notions. Maybe we don't need to give this for low volume disease. And then number three, of course, is, is uh, the, the patient uh, uh, lack of education and not understanding what the, what the different studies are. So as we know, this was a, a study that was performed for hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. Patients had to have an ECOG performance status of zero or one, and uh, they, had, they could have been on androgen deprivation therapy for less than three months and less than six months if they've had prior docetaxel, randomized to receive enzalutamide or placebo. The primary endpoint was RPFS, not survival, centrally assessed by a uh, committee. Uh, these are the baseline characteristics. 9% uh, had soft tissue disease only, uh, bone only 47%, and 38% had both bone and soft tissue. Most were ECOG performance status zero, and 62% of patients were high volume. This was the primary endpoint as reported previously, the radiographic progression-free survival, significant difference in favor of uh, enzalutamide combined with androgen deprivation therapy, has a ratio of 0 0.39, pretty impressive. Uh, at the time of the data cutoff, they did not have a mature survival data, uh, but all subgroups, uh, including those patients who had prior docetaxel therapy, low volume disease versus high volume disease, all these patients benefited. Uh, time to PSA progression was also significantly better in those patients who received uh, the enzalutamide. And uh, if we look at the initiation of the next antineoplastic therapy, again, not unexpectedly, we see that there is an improvement with uh, enzalutamide with a hazard ratio uh, of, of, of 0.4 or 0.49. Uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, the overall survival uh, has not yet been reached. Uh, we hope that this will be presented very, very shortly, and I believe there's an ESMO abstract that's been accepted for this. So the question, of course, is volume of disease. A patient comes in and says, doctor, do I really need this extra treatment if I've only got one spot, or if I've got two spots on my bone scan, or if I've got six spots? What's the cutoff? Well, uh, this was presented at ASCO this year. This was an uh, analysis that looked at radiographic progression-free survival in terms of the number of bone metastases. As we can see from this particular forest plot, uh, that all patients benefited irrespective of whether they had one metastatic lesion or more than six. So that's, I think, an important piece of data that helps to dispel this myth that the low volume disease patients should not be receiving uh, next generation treatments. Same thing with all of those other subgroups I mentioned before, and in terms of the other analyses as well. Time to PSA progression, again, a significant improvement in favor of uh, the, uh, all patients. It didn't matter, matter whether you had one med or six. Now, the next time to first scale rate event, it makes more sense, of course, that the more bone metastases you have, the less, more likelihood you have of developing a fracture. Uh, but again, all still in favor, maybe not so much uh, not so much for the higher volume disease, but still in favor of, of uh, the enzalutamide. Same thing for time to next antineoplastic therapy and the time to castration resistance. Uh, we all like to see our PSAs go down to zero, and uh, the question, of course, is do we have a uh, better rate of this uh, with the combination therapy versus uh, the just simple androgen deprivation therapy alone? Albeit these are small numbers, but again, you see that there is a significant difference in favor of the combination, uh, which is the purple, uh, and the green is the ADT alone, uh, and it does not matter the number of metastatic lesions you have. So again, uh, this is preserved. So in summary, uh, in a castrate-sensitive prostate cancer, enzalutamide plus androgen deprivation therapy improves radiographic progression-free survival over androgen deprivation therapy alone. The effect is consistent over all volumes of disease, and the overall survival data is still maturing, and we, we await that uh, hopefully sometime this year.
Thank you.